All right, it's 7.05, so we're going to get started. Once again, thanks everyone for coming. Welcome back. Um, I actually suspect that some people that were originally in the Friday sessions moved to the Saturday sessions because we've actually gotten about the same amount of people there, but we've lost a lot of people on the Friday meetings. Um, but anyway, before we start, some quick updates. Um, if you did the homework that I assigned last time, that was optional. Please email that to um, the email right here. Second of all, so I mentioned that we had a newsletter last time. I realized that I think I forgot to give the link. Um, and so here's the link. You guys can feel free to check it out to see what we're doing. Right now we have one edition out and the second edition is going to be published probably this weekend. It was supposed to be published last week, but I was kind of busy, so I didn't do that. Um, if you're interested in looking at it, I'll send the link in the chat in a bit. So today we're actually going to be structuring our meeting a bit different. Let me change my screen. One sec. Okay. So the last three lectures have kind of been me lecturing, which <laughs> could be kind of boring. Which is why this time I'm going to be testing out a new format of class. And so today we're mostly going to be, it's mostly going to be discussion based. Um, I found five high school ethics book cases that I thought would be suitable for discussion because of how they relate to what we've learned um, in the second and third classes. So today is going to be focused on these five ethics book cases. Um, have any, has anyone heard of ethics book before? Probably not, right? Because most people are in middle school. Okay, well, anyway, high school ethics bowl competition is kind of just, it's kind of like science bowl or math bowl, except it's for philosophy, it's for ethics. So some of these cases are a bit longer than what we're used to. That's because it's for high schoolers usually. Um, but I try to pick the most simple and the most direct ones. So here's the first one that we're going to do, working while sick. Can everyone see it on the screen? Hopefully silence is a yes. Could someone confirm that in the chat? <laughs> OK, great, thank you. It's kind of long, so I'm not going to read it. Um, so please read it yourselves. Oh, and tell me when you're done reading. The two people that just joined right now, we're we're just reading this ethics bull case.
I'll give everyone like two more minutes to read it. Or maybe one more minute. And for those of you who are done, um, here's the first question that we we're going to tackle. Okay, besides the people who joined, um, is anyone else not done reading? Okay, well, if you just joined or if you're not done, I guess you can continue reading, but I'm gonna start the discussion. So the first question, so these are the questions that the high school ethics bowl gives to the students that are competing. Um, we're not going to exactly follow the structure because, I mean, I think we're going to, the way we're going to do it is we're going to loosely follow these study questions and base our discussions around them. But the first study question is very straightforward. Is Kate morally permitted to work while sick given that she needs the money and needs to keep her job? Why or why not? And just like always, feel free to unmute if you want to talk. Ariel says, she can't go to work or else she could infect too many others. She still needs the money to survive, so she should be paid. Um, okay, that's the optimal solution, I guess. But as it says here, most private sector workers don't have paid leave. So let's assume that she will not be paid um, if she doesn't go. What could she do besides like, I guess, ask for reform? I think she can just go to work with a face mask. Well, the, the risk would still be there. Oh, yeah. Right. That would decrease risk, but there's still a small risk. Hmm. Someone says she should go, but wear a mask and take medicine. Um, so for, for the two of you who said that, would you say that you're willing to accept the risk of possibly infecting everyone in order for her to continue her job. He says, work from home. Well, that's not plausible because this is a server at a fast food restaurant. You can't really serve at home. And once again, um, I prefer if you guys talked instead of typing the chat. So Isabel says, no, because her work is directly with customers and she's contagious. However, it says her employer encouraged taking sick days. Um, she likely wouldn't, won't be fired. It's true that she wouldn't be fired, but there's still a huge financial strain put on her and her family. And I saw Maris's question about how it's similar to the trolley problem. I would say that it's a bit different because in the trolley problem, you have the aspect of the person pulling the lever is not directly connected to the problem. So, so a lot of the question is asking yourself, what's the difference between direct and indirect murder? On the other hand, in this case, it's pretty clear to see that if she went to work, it would have a net damage into, on the world and on the people she works with. However, the question is, what is she morally able to do? Even if, is she able to do something damaging to others in order to help herself? Because that's a reasonable thing to do, otherwise she would starve. So it's kind of different from the trolley problem, I think. Yes, can we talk about George Floyd next class? Um, I mean, I feel like it's hard to have a discussion on that kind of issue because 
I doubt that many of us here think that the thing that the police did was right. So it wouldn't really be a discussion. So it seems like most people think that um, that Kate should continue to work. Who disagrees with that? I mean, who thinks that Kate has an obligation to put others before herself? I actually think she has the obligations to put others before herself. What if she what if she meets a person who's like very sensitive to the flu virus and can can die if they get infected? I think if that's the case, Kate would probably have to pay their medical bills because she's responsible. Hmm, okay. So you think that well, on the other side of the issue, though, is the fact that it's like a huge moral burden on her, right? Because both choices lead to some damage. So assuming that she, if she makes the wrong choice, whether choice, which, whichever choice that be, do you guys think that she should be forced to take the blame? Like, for example, if she went to work in order to make sure that her and her family don't starve to death, um, would that, um, and then she ends up like giving the flu to someone and they die? Would that be her fault or would that be the fault of like the company? Well, I feel like it wouldn't be directly her fault because she didn't choose to get the flu, but the company's not really paying her any compensation or anything for sick leave. So I'm not really sure. Okay. E, um, do you want to explain why you think it's the fault of the company? What is PPP? I think she should just tell the boss her situation and and ask him nicely to pay her. <laughs> well, I'm sure she would do that if she could, but obviously the dilemma comes from the fact that her boss is likely not able to do that or not willing to do that. Oh, someone's, so PVP is Paycheck Protection Program. I'm not entirely sure on the specifics of that, but what if we assume that that doesn't exist? Okay, the person with the, the name is a string of emojis. I'm not exactly sure what that is. They said that the company gives her a choice. That's, I think, one of the fundamental questions in this, in this um, discussion is, did she really have a choice? Like on the surface, it seems sure she did have a choice, but when one of your options is starving to death, is that really a choice or does she have no choice? I feel like morally the company should have some responsibilities about their employees like a lot of larger companies can afford insurances for their employees but i'm not really sure about this company okay i see it seems like yeah this case is like the boss might not be very willing to pay her sick leaves yeah i think one of the reasons i chose this case was because um it's another situation in which someone, a bad situation is put on someone and both choices are bad. So the question is, is it still possible to act morally here? This is kind of similar to the question I posed, I think last, last class. I don't think it's possibly to act morally like either way. Okay. I think it's the company's fault since they didn't pay Kate when she got sick and they didn't care about one of her one of the employees families dying so actually the boss is putting himself first before his employees. Mm, okay, that makes sense. Let's I kind of this, agree or, with that, but like not really. What's your um what's your rebuttal? 
it's like on one one side I'm debating like whether whether it's Kate's fault for not working like there's another theory that kind of thinks only working people deserve money and when they don't work they don't deserve that money but but like on the other hand it's not her choice to get sick and not go to work I'm not sure Okay, that, that's a fair point of view. Let's move on to the second question. Um, for those of you who said that Kate should avoid going to work to prevent her from getting sick, would your decision change if it was revealed that Kate is actually a single mother whose children depend on her making money? Meaning that if she were to not, not go to work, then she wouldn't get her employees sick, but that could cause her to lose her job and cause her children to possibly starve or be in a really bad situation. Is there a lag? Who's this lag? She could find another job. Well, if she could do that, this wouldn't be a dilemma either. I'm mostly just directing this question to the people who thought that she should stay at home. Like, does the added children change your decision? Someone says, so Isabel says, poverty leaves no room for morals. That, that was definitely one of the popular responses to this question. Um, well, not exactly that poverty leaves no room for morals, but that in a bad situation, you can't be immoral if both choices are so bad because it's not your choice that you're choosing between two bad options. Why is everyone anonymous and then something? What about the third question? Um, so initially they said that Kate interacted with only customers, meaning that or Kate interacted with both coworkers and customers. So one of the big arguments that people said was that it could be, it's even worse to infect customers than coworkers because by being a co-worker, you're kind of agreeing to be in that kind of environment, which runs the risk of getting sick, maybe. However, if you're infecting customers, that brings a whole slew of moral problems, such as, like, it's really bad to infect someone who isn't part of your organization and isn't willing to take that risk, that doesn't want to get sick just from, like, buying a burger, I guess. Didn't that already happen? Some people were selling, I don't know, stuff at that Wuhan market, and, and then everyone got sick. <laughs> well, that was the stuff that was sick, not the person that was sick. But <laughs> I guess that's kind of, I guess it's true that this question has a huge, this question has a very big, um, it's very relevant to what's happening right now. Well, if she only interacted with coworkers, that would, that 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 would very much likely get them sick too. And if these coworkers aren't aware of their sickness and interact with customers, they would probably get the same results. Okay. Well, what if this wasn't a fast food job, so the coworkers aren't interacting with customers? Do you think it's worse that she's infecting customers rather than coworkers, or is it the same, or other way around? It's probably the same. I mean, customers and coworkers are both people, and even if she just interacted with customers, she's still interacting with people and getting people sick. I see. Okay. Who disagrees? Who thinks that um, there is actually a difference between coworkers and customers? Like, it's one co one relatively common argument is that it's worse to infect customers because. Yeah, Isabel says customers are paying, whereas coworkers are there to do their job. Okay, several people do agree. Does, do one of you want to talk in the um, voice channel thing? Oh, you can't. Okay, that's fine. 
<laughs> um, 